college football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. It is the Winning Cures Everything Bowl Preview number three. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. Hopefully, everybody's having a wonderful week thus far. Hopefully, everybody had a good Christmas. I am recording before Christmas because I got some traveling to do. And I'm not sure when I'm going to have time to actually fit this in. So I got to knock it out while I can. Uh, But we're recording on December 20th. This will come out on Tuesday, December 27th. So uh, a little early. The lines might be a bit off. That's okay. We'll figure it out as we go. But regardless, it is bowl preview number three. We're talking about the games from Wednesday, December 28th, all the way through Friday, December 30th. And then bowl preview number four will come out in a couple of days, and that one's going to be uh, the games on December 31st, all the way through January 2nd. And so uh, if you want the official best bets, you can always go over to the Bet U.S. College Football Show. That's right. I host that on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, once we move into the post-national championship time period, We'll figure it out. We'll see exactly what the what the schedule will look like, but uh, I would anticipate us doing a lot more with that channel over there. The show is brought to you each and every time out by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. They've got fast payouts. They've got personalized customer service, and they are fantastic at it. Uh, everything about this place is awesome. So check it out, BetUS.com. Uh, there's a link in the description. You get a $50 free play with no deposit required. I... I I don't know how they do it, but I highly recommend that you go and check it out. A $50 free play, no deposit required. All you got to do is sign up using the link that I have given you in the description below. Go ahead and click that thing and get yourself started. Again, Bet U.S. College Football Show, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a link in the description for that one as well. Look, regular season, I am 89-77 and 77 against the spread in this segment. Uh... This is where I just give you my lean. I give you a pick on every single game, and I break down the analysis. I'll try and go uh, a little quicker today, uh, but this is for the people traveling, the people you know out there doing their thing. We'll uh, we'll start with a little bit of uh, mood music and whatnot. We'll bump up that uh, that music, and we'll see how this goes. All right, so let's go on and start this thing off. Well, let's uh, let's run into the first game, and that will be. Central Florida and Duke, or I guess UCF and Duke in the Military Bowl. This one's on Wednesday, December 28th, 1 p.m. Central Time. Duke, a three-point favorite currently, total of 62.5, numbers from BetUS. Let's uh, let's break this down. I'm going to turn this music down some, so it's not quite quite so in the ear. But uh, but look, hey, you start looking at some of these numbers, and you know I've got UCF favored by .34 points here. Like, hey, we're not talking anything crazy. Um, but at the same time, you got to worry about uh, Plumley, the quarterback, and his hamstring injury. Mikey Keene is not going to play in this because he is transferring. Uh, the Duke defense, like, what, what UCF does best is run the ball. But a lot of that has to do with the quarterback run game. So if Plumley is still dealing with a hamstring, how much is that going to affect him getting out of the pocket, etc.? Right? They're not great at throwing the football. Number 70 PPA per pass on offense for UCF. Number 80 for Duke on defense. The passing success rate, UCF number 34, Duke at number 104. Where where you really want to be with Gus Malzahn's team is running the ball. Number 20 PPA per rush since week 8. Number 22 rushing success rate. Well, Duke is number 72 in rushing success allowed. On the other side of the field, Duke's offense, really good at throwing the ball. UCF's defense, not very good at stopping that or the run, to be completely honest. Uh, Duke, number 34 PPA per pass. UCF's defense, number 102 in that metric. Uh, Number 100 in passing success rate allowed. Duke's offense, number 27. Riley Leonard does really good things with the football. Kevin Johns, the offensive coordinator for Duke, is he has called a fantastic season thus far. They have utilized every bit of talent that they've got, and, and they continue to do so. This game means something to them. I don't know how much it means to UCF, who, of course, lost in the AAC title game. That would have gotten them a uh, New Year's Six Bowl berth, and instead they're in the Military Bowl. So it's a big drop from there. 
Uh, turnover margin, Duke significantly better. They do not beat themselves. They're number 41 in penalties per game. Duke is number two in turnover margin. Well, UCF number 74 in turnover margin and number 20 in, pen, uh, in penalties per game. And so you look at this, the team that is uh, less likely to beat themselves would be Duke here. Uh, I know that this line has gotten out to Duke minus three, even though my numbers say that UCF should be favored by a little bit, uh, just based on the data from the last eight weeks of the season. But give me give me the Blue Devils. I like what Mike Elko's doing here. Uh, he's got a, a team that is very fired up. I'm uh, I'm excited about this. Give me Duke to cover the three on that one. Uh, cheers to Mike Elko and Bunch. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right. We're heading to the Liberty Bowl. Da -da -da. we got to write our times down. The Liberty Bowl, Kansas and Arkansas. Arkansas currently a three-point favorite, total of 69 over at BetUS. Uh, this one's on Wednesday, December 28th, 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Of course, another ESPN game. But let's pull up the numbers so that you can see what I am looking at on this. Da -da -da. All right, so based on the last uh, the last eight weeks of the season, or no, 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 since uh, week eight, excuse me, so I guess last six weeks of the season, I look at this, and Kansas' defense is a problem, right? That's a, a big issue. Um, they're number 112 in defensive PPA per drive. That's predicted points added uh, per drive. Arkansas just kind of right there in the middle on everything. Number 70, offensive PPA per drive. Number 65, defensive PPA per drive. Uh, Kansas' offense is the best unit on the field. Like, by far. Not even close. Arkansas, of course, losing defensive coordinator Barry Odom. Uh, they've got a, a kid coming in to call plays in that one. Um, and I forget his name, but he's like a 29-year-old guy who was just like a, a GA four seasons ago. So, uh, just some some interesting stuff going on here as far as guys that are sitting out for Arkansas, etc. I don't know how interested in this game Arkansas really is. My numbers have Arkansas favored by 4.86 based on the last eight weeks of data. Or last six weeks of data. I swear I'm going to get this right eventually. I don't think I trust that. Uh, while, while I do understand that the defensive success rate for Kansas is awful, number 113, um, I've still got... I, I still don't think... I, like, I think Kansas is going to be much more amped up for this one. They haven't been to a bowl game since 2008. This is a pretty big situation. I mean, it, it, Arkansas was just in, what, the Citrus Bowl or the Outback Bowl, whatever it was, against Penn State last year. They won nine games a year ago. Uh, this year, you know, limping in 6-6, six and six, they lost to Missouri. They got a lot of guys transferring, a lot of guys just sitting out for NFL stuff, etc. Like, I, I, if you look at the numbers, this thing's pretty tight. What my model cannot do is pull out individual guys. And Arkansas has a lot more of them that are out. So, I'm going to roll with Kansas. Like, give me, give me the Jayhawks plus the three here. This is simply a pick based on a team that wants to be there against a team that eh, doesn't necessarily care like they're going to go out and compete but it's not the most important thing in the world to them so kansas plus three i like leipold scheming them up in that one the holiday bowl is next up on the docket the holiday bowl we've got oregon against north carolina and very interesting very interesting here. Uh, North Carolina is a 14 and a half point underdog. The total sits at 73 on this one. It is uh, Wednesday, December 28th, 7 p.m. Central Time. This one's on Fox. But let's go on and pull it up on the screen. And yeah, the numbers based on the last eight weeks of the season. I swear I did it again. The numbers since week eight would have Oregon as a 14 and a half point favorite. Josh Downs is sitting out. Uh, there's a lot of North Carolina guys that are going to be transferring. That's kind of a problem, right? You start looking through some of these numbers, it gets a little tricky. Uh, that North Carolina defense is as bad as advertised. They're number 114 defensive PPA per drive. Uh, the offense, though, which had been the saving grace all season, has kind of run into a wall here, and they are now number 50 in PPA per drive on offense. Like, they were significantly higher, but against Georgia Tech, against uh, NC State, against Clemson, 
they just were not able to get a whole lot done. And that's a problem. So I look at this and I am, I, I believe that this team is, what's the word I'm looking for? This team is very much, they're reeling. How's that? This is a team that is reeling currently. Um, Oregon, on the other hand, like, yeah, they had, had to deal with Bo Nix's injury towards the end of the season, et cetera. Lost some games maybe they shouldn't have. Uh, they they gave up big-time running plays against Oregon State. It was just a disaster. They're number 90 defensive PPA per drive. Uh, but the offense, still number four in offensive PPA per drive. That's predicted points added per drive. That defensive success rate for both teams, number 99 for North Carolina, number 119 for Oregon. Uh, but you start looking at things like available yards margin, right? Uh, you start looking at net points per drive. Oregon significantly better points per play margin uh, Oregon number 33 North Carolina number 66 net points per drive Oregon number 13 in the country North Carolina number 55 there's not a whole lot that I can look at that gives North Carolina a big chance in this game however when you get to that 14 and a half that just seems like a lot this this sounds like a good spot like Drake May has said that he's going to play in this game you've got you got some dudes that want to play in this game. Uh, I think there's going to be enough that want to play. Like, don't forget, there's there's some guys sitting out for Oregon as well. Not a ton, but maybe enough to make a difference. Uh, I think North Carolina's offense can can get the ball rolling here. The, this is not a defense like what they have faced with. Even Georgia Tech has a a decent defense, right? They were able to scheme up some things against North Carolina. Uh, this is not Clemson's defense either. Like, this is a not good defense so 14 and a half uh, a little too rich for my blood even though the numbers have it at 14 and a half i still think that north carolina can score enough points to stay eh, somewhat in this ball game uh, give me uh give me the tar heels plus the 14 and a half on this one now we move to the texas bowl texas tech and ole miss in the Texas Bowl. This one's in Houston. Ole Miss, a three and a half point favorite. The total sits at 69 and a half over at BetUS currently. Uh, th this is a Wednesday, December 28th game at 8 p.m. Central Time. And let's go on and pull it up. Let's uh, pull up the numbers on the screen here so that you can see exactly what you're working with. Since week eight of the season, the stats would have Ole Miss favored by 4.39 points. At least my model would. But you start looking at PPA margin, stuff like that, and it gets a little tricky. Ole Miss, number 94 in PPA margin, Texas Tech, number 36. Uh, Ole Miss's defensive success rate. Now, remember, the toughest part of their schedule was at the end of the season, and uh, this is opponent adjusted. So you got to toss that in there. Uh, number 102 defensive PPA per drive for Ole Miss, the number 125 in defensive success rate allowed. You look at Texas Tech, number 63, offensive success rate, number 50, defensive success rate allowed. You look at the PPA margin, number 36, and then your offensive PPA per drive is number 47, defensive is number 39. So the Texas Tech numbers look significantly better, but when you when you opponent adjust, that's how that point spread gets to where it is. So I've got them by about four and a half points. The spread here is about three and a half. Let's look at the strengths and the weaknesses. Ole Miss's offense, uh, not great at throwing the football. Obviously, Jackson Dart has not been very good this year as far as just overall efficiency uh, passing the ball. So what do they like to do? They like to run the ball. Uh, they're number 24 in the country in rush rate. That is uh, over 57% of the time they run the ball. And that happens to be one thing that uh, Texas Tech does not defend very well. Um, Texas Tech, number 94 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Uh, Quinshawn Judkins is going to have a field day with that, but they're also number 52 in PPA per rush and uh, number 63 in rushing success rate allowed. Now, those numbers align pretty well with what Ole Miss does, but you start looking at like standard downs PPA, standard down success rate, etc. Yeah, the Texas Tech numbers look good. Eh, a lot of that might be uh, selection, might be uh, based on who they've actually played. So uh, you look at Ole Miss's defense, not very good against the pass at all. Number 108 PPA per pass, number 128 pass success rate allowed. That Texas Tech offense, not great at scoring points off the pass. Number 102 PPA per pass, uh, number 47 passing success rate. 
But what they want to do, really, and what they've been best at, is running the football. They're number 13 PPA per rush since week eight. And uh, and number 34 rushing success rate, well, turns out that that happens to be what what Ole Miss is pretty good at stopping. Number 43 PPA per rush. So I, I look at this, I think that Ole Miss is going to want to get the bad taste out of their mouth from how the season ended. Uh, because, man, did it get bad. It got pretty bad there at the end. But, um, yeah, I think uh, I think just looking at these numbers, some of the Texas Tech numbers might be a little bit inflated. Uh, Donovan Smith is transferring out. He, not that he was going to play anyway. I think he had been relegated to, like, number three on the depth chart. Texas Tech got a big win over Mississippi State in the last bowl season. I don't think they get it done here. I'll take Ole Miss to uh, kind of right the ship a little bit here. Yeah, give me give me the Rebels minus three and a half. The fight in Lane Kiffins to cover the number on that one. All right, on the other side, we've got the Pinstripe Bowl, the Cheese It Bowl, the Alamo Bowl, etc. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's do this thing. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and Bet US TV has you covered every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. We've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff. Only on the Bet US TV College Football Channel. Visit WinningCuresEverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit BetUSTV.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, moving right along, let's go ahead and, well, uh, first let me tell you about Valtimeri Surf Company, Collegiate Town Apparel. They got fantastic designs. The material is super comfortable. Go and check them out, ValtimeriSurfCo.com. Use the promo code GARY10 to get 10% off of your order. That is G-A-R-Y-1-0. There's a link in the description for you to click. That way you can check it out for yourself. Go and check them out, Valtimeri Surf Co. Shirts. All right, let's start this music back up. There we go. Do a little different tune here. All right, moving along, we've got the Pinstripe Bowl and Syracuse and Minnesota in the Pinstripe Bowl. Minnesota currently a 10-point favorite. The total sits at 42. This one's on Thursday, December 29th at 1 p.m. Central Time. It's another ESPN Bowl game. And... Let's pull up the numbers here. We've got Minnesota by 10.32 based on all of the data from week eight on. So right on the number. Uh, now what this model does not do is take out individual players. So like Sean Tucker, the running back for Syracuse, sitting out. Uh, Tony White, the defensive coordinator, being gone to Nebraska. The offensive coordinator, Robert Anai, being gone. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an issue for Dino Babers and Bunch. You look at what is happening with Syracuse, number 108 PPA margin. Right now, that's predicted points added margin. Since week eight, Minnesota is number 46. Uh, The strength of schedules, very similar. Uh, Syracuse, number 53. Minnesota, number 59. In that, uh, I think Minnesota is just a significantly better team. Tanner Morgan, it appears, is going to try and play in this one. That Minnesota defense, really, really good against the run. And you see here, that Syracuse not good at throwing the football. Number 126 PPA per pass since week eight. Number 124 in passing success rate. Garrett Schrader just is not able to get it done, and teams have figured out how to key in on him. At that Minnesota defense, uh, not going to have to worry about the pass too much, I don't believe, because I think that they are going to run the football a little bit more here. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, they're, they're throwing the ball 56% of the time. A lot of that maybe has to do with the fact that they get behind in these games, or at least have. Uh, was not a good end of the year. I'll say that for Syracuse. And that Minnesota rushing defense, like that's that's what Syracuse was a little bit better at, number 87 PPA per rush. Uh, Minnesota number 10 
PPA per rush allowed, number 12 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, they're number 20 in offensive line yards allowed. Like, it, I just don't know how Syracuse is going to be able to score in this game other than maybe uh, some big plays. Um, and maybe, I mean, because Minnesota's number 69 in rushing explosiveness allowed, number 81 in passing explosiveness allowed. But it's not like Syracuse is graded out of one of those. On the other side, like, Minnesota's going to try and run the football. Um, and you look at rushing success rate, like number 55 for Minnesota's offense, number 119 for Syracuse's defense. The PPA per rush is uh, is about the same. Number 67 for Minnesota's offense, number 62 for Syracuse's defense. There's uh, there's things there. There's, there's things there. So you look at all of the intangibles, uh, penalties per game, turnover margin. Like Syracuse is the most penalized team in the country. Number 131, they're averaging almost nine penalties per game. And Minnesota is only averaging 3.7 per game. They're number two in the country. Uh, turnover margin, pretty equal. Points per play margin, Minnesota is significantly better. Net points per drive, Minnesota is significantly better. Uh, this is this looks like a, a big win for Minnesota here. It's It's gotten out to a huge number. It was just eight like a day ago. Uh, but when Sean Tucker announced that he's not going to play, I mean, that was all she wrote for uh, for that line. So give me uh, give me the Golden Gophers to cover the 10 here. Uh, I know it's a big line, but I just don't see how Syracuse stays in this game. I just don't. The Cheez-It Bowl is next up. Oklahoma against Florida State. Florida State's a 9.5 point favorite currently over at BetUS. The total sits at 60, uh, 63, 62. What did I write down here? Ah, uh, Yes. 64. How's that? Total of 64 on this. Thursday, December 29th. It's 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Let's pull it up. Let's look at some numbers. Let's see what we got. Since week eight of the season, my model would have Florida State winning this game. Uh, 42 to 21, basically. So 20.29 points. Uh, the fact that this is still in single digits is mind-blowing. I just don't understand it. You look at the PPA margin, Florida State is the best in the country from week eight through the end of the season. Uh, Oklahoma's number 50. Oklahoma's offense number 76 in PPA per drive. Florida State's defense number 11. Florida State's offense number six in offensive PPA per drive. Oklahoma's defense is number 48. There's just not a whole lot of things that you can really look at that would point towards Oklahoma being able to stay in this ball game. You look at, uh, at points per play margin. You look at net points per drive. You look at uh, available yards margin, like success rate, etc. I mean, it's all right here on your screen. Uh, number eight in offensive success for Florida State. Number six in defensive success. You look over at what Oklahoma's doing, number 50 in offensive success, number 61 in defensive success rate. Here's the issue with that offensive success rate for Oklahoma, though. Number 112 passing the ball, Number 41, rushing the ball. Now, maybe they lean a little bit on the freshman Barnes, but it, Eric Gray's out, and he has been kind of carrying this offense towards the end of the season. So if you don't have Eric Gray, what is this going to look like? I mean, it's just kind of a problem here. So you look at uh, Florida State's offense, there's nothing really that Oklahoma's defense is going to be able to do that will, that will slow them down. Uh, number four, PPA per rush. Number 14, PPA per pass. Uh, and they like to run the ball a lot more. They're number eight in rushing success rate. Uh, Oklahoma's defense, number 79 in rushing success rate allowed. At Standard Downs PPA, Florida State is going to be ahead of the chains basically all day. Jordan Travis has been awesome. It looks like all the guys want to play. They want to get to that 10th win. Uh, Mike Norvell has got this thing turned around. There's not a whole lot to be said here. Uh, there's Everything that Florida State is doing at the end of the season has been fantastic. So... Give me Florida State to cover the nine and a half. I, I can't understand why it is this low. Of course, I said the same thing about Florida State when they played against Florida. And we saw how that turned out. So maybe it'll be explosive. But the issue here is that Oklahoma has got a bunch of guys sitting out. Florida did not at that point. So that was a rivalry game. It was a little different. Uh, Florida State, of course, playing in Orlando, relatively close to Tallahassee. Not like Norman. This is a bad year for Brent Venables and company. Uh, but yeah, Florida State minus nine and a half is the lean for me on that. The pick there. 
Again, my best bets are over at BetUS, uh, the college football show over there. Go and watch those. The links will be in the description. So check them out. Check them out. All right. The Alamo Bowl. The Alamo Bowl has Texas and Washington. Washington is a four-point underdog. And the total sits at 67 and a half. Uh, it's Thursday, December 29th. It's 8 p.m. Central Time on this one. And, of course, you know what I'm doing. Let's pull up the numbers. Let's see what we got here. Right now, I've got Washington favored by 1.39 points based on the last uh, six weeks of the regular season. Right? Uh, number eight, or week eight, through, what, week 14? Another one of these played in a conference championship game. Nothing like that. All right. 8 p.m. Central Time kick. Uh, might be better for Washington. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to play up an advantage here. Uh, this Washington defense has been bad, but, like, not not that bad. They're, they're better than Oregon, I guess. Uh, number 89, PPA per drive on defense. Uh, that Texas offense, uh, overall, hmm has not been great, at least not at scoring points. Number 64 PPA per drive. That's predicted points added per drive since week eight. Uh, so it matches up fairly well against that defense. However, Washington's offense, number five in PPA per drive against Texas, number 43 PPA per drive on defense. What Texas wants to do here is run the ball, except that they have got two running backs that it appears have opted out of the game. Of course, being our Robinson is out and Johnson is also out. Uh, so that number 28 PPA per rush for them, eh, like, are we sure that that's going to hold up here? Uh, number 17 in rushing success rate, well, Washington's defense is number 105. So maybe they got somebody else that's like a third stringer that's kind of waiting in the wings to be able to do something big. That offensive line uh, could probably do some good things. Texas' uh, offensive line yards is number 33 in the country. Uh, Washington's defense, number 95. They can get pushed around a little bit. Uh, trying to pass the ball, like, yeah, okay, like number 85 PPA per pass on offense for Texas, number 75 on defense for Washington. Texas will be able to score some points. My issue is that I think that Washington will be able to score more because what they're really good at is the thing that Texas has a weakness in, that Texas secondary, kind of an issue. Uh, number 52 PPA per pass, well, Washington is number 22 on offense. Number 50 in passing success rate, Washington's offense is number one in the country. Nearly a 50% success rate passing the football. That's uh, that's an issue. Passing explosiveness, and no, they're not very explosive on offense. Uh, Washington is not number 87 there, but they can be when they need to be. Uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of havoc on them, Texas's defense, because Washington's offensive line, number one in havoc rate allowed. They do not allow it, period. So, uh, you look at passing downs PPA, even when they get behind the chains, which they don't do often, uh, because it's only 27% of the time that they are really behind the chains, uh, they're still number two in passing downs PPA. Number one in passing down success rate. Well, Texas's defense, number 81 in passing down success rate on defense. I think Washington can score a ton of points here. Like, a ton of points. So... You know, it, these are two pretty evenly matched teams. Uh, points per play margin, Texas is number seven and Washington number 18. Net points per drive, you've got a Texas number 10, Washington at number 11. Available yards margin, Washington number 10, Texas number 22. These two teams are a coin flip. There is no reason that there should be a four-point spread here. So give me Kalen DeBoer. Give me Kalen DeBoer plus the four. Yeah, I know that rhyme. That was good, right? <laughs> give me give me the Washington Huskies, plus four on that one. Moving along to the Duke's Mayo Bowl. That's right. Duke's Mayo Bowl, Maryland, and NC State. This is a pick em at this point. NC State, uh, well, excuse me. It was NC State as an underdog. Now it's a pick em. Uh Total of 47 and a half at BetUS. Of course, latest lines over there. It's Friday, December 30th at 11 a.m. Central Time. And, of course, I got to get the numbers on the screen for you so you can see what we're, what we're looking at. Who knows who the quarterback will be at this point for NC State? I got no idea. Here's what I do know. Uh, Jarrett, Raheem, or Raheem Jarrett, uh, he is apparently not playing in this game. Uh, so that's a bit of an issue for the Maryland offense. 
these two teams, uh, Maryland number 58 in PPA margin, that's predicted points added margin, uh, NC State number 67. Now their offense has been very good. Uh, both of the defenses have played better than anticipated, uh, at least for NC State. Like it, the, their defense should be in, should have been better than it has been. But number 34, defensive PPA per drive for NC State. Number 36 for Maryland on that. Uh, both of the offenses, though, not great. Number 87 PPA per drive on offense for Maryland and NC State number 94. So we're looking at two teams that are trying to uh, trying to stop the other one. How's that? Uh, NC State really good against the run and Maryland's defense really good against the pass. Okay. Uh, there's not a whole lot of numbers that you can that you can really give me on this. <laughs> like, uh, neither, neither is very good at offensive success rate. At Maryland at number 82 at defensive success rate. At NC State is way better at that number eight at defensive success rate since week eight. Um, I look at this and my numbers have NC State favored by 4.40. The quarterback issue certainly is concerning, but... I believe that NC State's defense is going to be able to get after Maryland on this. They want this bowl game. Um, they didn't get to play the last couple of years. So I think they really want to win this one. I will take NC State here. I, I like Dave Doran. He's staying there. Um, yeah, they're without their offensive coordinator. Is that really that much of a problem? I mean, he got hired away by Coastal Carolina. I, uh, I would take NC State. So there's a lot of not, not a... Not a ton of numbers to back that up, but yeah, give me the wolf pack. Wolf pack on a pickle. All right, let's. Uh, on the other side, we're gonna hit the Sun Bowl. You know, UCLA and Pitt. We're gonna hit the Gator Bowl with Notre Dame and South Carolina. We'll hit the Orange Bowl with Tennessee and Clemson, etc. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's go ahead and check this out. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures, and you can follow Gary at Gary W C E. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. And if you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right, moving right along. Let me go on and tell you about Flow Sports. Over 25,000 sports matches or games, whichever term you prefer, uh, Flow Sports TV has got what you want as a sports fan. Go and check them out, Flow Sports TV. Uh, there is a link in the description. Click that link. It helps me out. They help me out. They help you out. I help you out. Eh, whatever. All right, music back. The Sun Bowl. That's right. Pitt and UCLA. UCLA currently a four-point favorite. Total sits at 54 and a half. This one's on Friday, December 30th at 1 p.m. Central Time on CBS. And what do you got to do here? You got to pull up the numbers so that you can see exactly what you're working with. All right. Since week eight of the season, my numbers would have UCLA favored by half a point. UCLA was not great down the stretch, especially their defense. The issue here is that uh, Keaton Slovis is transferring away from Pitt. Uh, Abani Kanda, the running back for Pitt, is going to set this one out. They got some other guys that are that are opting out of this one. Apparently, people in Pitt not super interested in going to El Paso, Texas. Yeah, okay, I can understand that. Uh, UCLA, it appears they got all their dudes. I haven't seen anybody that's uh, that's really opting out at this point. Again, we are recording this early on December twentieth. So there we go. Offensive success rate UCLA number two. Uh, Pitt is number four in defensive success uh, success rate. Pitt number 49 in offensive success rate. UCLA number 128. That's a bit of an issue. If Pitt's defense shows up, yeah, they could get some stops against Chip Kelly's offense. 
I just don't know that they're going to show up on this. Um, I don't know how interested Pitt is in in winning this game at all. But I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be kind of cold in El Paso. I'm going to trust Pat Narduzzi's defense and the fact that they will want to slow this game down. I don't know who's going to play quarterback for them. Uh, this seems like an easy, easy UCLA bet. But I think the line is way off. Like, this might be a field goal game. Uh, anytime we've had teams from L.A. going out to El Paso, Texas uh, for, you know, the end of the year, it doesn't always turn out well. Um, Pitt, I think that there's at least enough, you know, defensive push here that we're going to we're gonna have some fun. I don't think that the Pitt offense against the UCLA defense is going to be fun, but I do think that... I do think Pitt's defense will show up. So we'll see what Dorian Thompson Robinson does here. But uh, you know what? I'll take Pitt. I'll take Pitt plus the four here. Uh, normal normal breakdowns would be, you know, huge on this. But I'm I'm not going to bother doing that because there's going to be opt-outs. There's going to be more things happen here. Um, and I don't think that the numbers for this game are necessarily all that important. So, all right. Moving along, the Gator Bowl is Notre Dame and South Carolina. And South Carolina is a two and a half point dog. The total sits at 52 on this. It's Friday, December 30th at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. This one is an ESPN game. Let's go and pull it up. Now, Drew Pine is not playing in this one. Uh, several guys from Notre Dame have opted out of this one. South Carolina, Austin Sogner is out of this one. Uh, he is transferring back to Oklahoma. There are a lot of interesting things going on here. We'll just say that. I'm uh, I'm interested in just who's going to play. Like apparently Spencer Adler is going to play, uh, etc. But when I start looking at these numbers, like one that since week eight of this season, my numbers would have Notre Dame favored by over ten points. I mean that's that's kind of nuts. And here's the thing, it. The line started dropping significantly when Drew Pine uh, announced that he was, you know, out that he was transferring to Arizona State, etc. When I look at these numbers, I don't know that they have to worry about a whole lot. Like South Carolina's got a bunch of guys that are transferring, Jaheim Bell, uh, etc. Right? Like I, I just I, I know Spencer Adler's going to play. I know that there's some other guys that are going to play. I also know Marshawn Lloyd is in the transfer portal. And I don't know if he's going to stay, but we'll see. Uh, the reason why I'm not so worried about Drew Pine being gone is I don't know that Notre Dame is going to have to worry about throwing the football at all. They already run the ball over 61% of the time over the last six weeks of the season. Their number 12 in rushing success rate, South Carolina's defense is number 126. They're number 30 in PPA per rush. That's predicted points added per rush. South Carolina's defense is number 126. So while I was interested initially in betting on South Carolina, especially the way that they ended the season. Uh, I, I don't think that you can replicate what they did against Tennessee, for one, because I think Notre Dame's got a significantly better defense, or against Clemson, because the Clemson special teams turnovers, etc., were just a disaster. So in this situation, I'm not expecting Notre Dame to uh, beat themselves here. Uh, you, you look at you know, the turnover margin, number 42 in giveaways per game. They're not great at getting takeaways, but which team is more likely to turn the ball over? Well, that'd, that'd be South Carolina. When you look at penalties per game, Notre Dame is number 21 in the country, only averaging 4.7 per game. South Carolina is number 99, averaging 7 per game. There's a big difference there. Like, which team is more likely to make a mistake that's going to cost them uh, a cover or cost them the game? And I, I think that's going to be on South Carolina. So Shane Beamer has gotten real chesty here lately, and I understand it. I mean, those are two massive, massive wins to end the season. Uh, they go eight and four in a year that a lot of people thought they would probably be about six and six. Cheers to them for doing it. And, and the recruiting stuff is going really well. But man, I, I'm going to ride Notre, Notre Dame. I like Notre Dame. Regardless of the quarterback situation, give me the fight in Irish, minus two and a half. I don't think they'll have to throw the football. Sorry, Gamecocks fans. Y'all know I love you, but uh, this is a matchup deal. Matchup for me. I'd love to be proven wrong, but that's that's the way I'm going to lean on that one. 
The Arizona Bowl has got Ohio and Wyoming. Now, that one is tricky, tricky. Wyoming, a one-point underdog currently. These are both cold weather, uh, weather teams, by the way, playing in Arizona. How much fun is that? So, Wyoming is a one-point underdog currently uh, at BetUS. The total sits at 43 on this. It's another Friday, December 30th game, 3.30 p.m. Central Time on Barstool. That's right. They got their own game now. I think it's like BarstoolTV.com or something you can watch online. It's free. Like, go check it out. Ohio and Wyoming. Let's look at the numbers. Since week eight of the season, my numbers would have Ohio favored by five points. Here's the only issue with that. Curtis Rourke was the quarterback for the majority of those games. And you can't take that out of the model. So, really, these two teams are a lot more even than you would think. Because I think Rourke is certainly worth about five points. I think this should be about a pick here. You saw what a good defense would do against Ohio in the MAC championship game. Like, Toledo just shut them down. I don't know that Wyoming can do that, but Wyoming did do some pretty good things against uh, Boise State. Uh, they were not able to do very good things against Fresno, but that's because Fresno was able to throw the football on them. I don't know that Ohio is going to be able to throw the football. Uh, while they're number seven PPA per pass, uh, that was with Rourke. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit different here. Uh, and they're only throwing the ball 44% of the time. They're not very good running the ball. Uh, but Wyoming's defense is number 103 PPA per rush. Ohio is number 80. Like, who who wants to be here? Ohio's defense is fantastic against the rush. Wyoming's offense is really good running the ball. They're not very good throwing the ball, especially with uh, the backup quarterback. Um, we'll see if uh, if Peasley is back at quarterback in this one. I, I don't have any update there. I, I look at this, and, and my number says Ohio... I'm going to ride that direction. I think that Tim Albin is going to figure some things out here. Um, I think their defense stops exactly what um, what Wyoming does best. And I think their offense, uh, there's not enough film on... Is it CJ Harris? I think it's CJ Harris. Uh, there's not enough film on what they are trying to do here. They might have an entirely new game plan going into this one. So, props to Ohio. Like, I'm going to take them. I'm going to take the Bobcats here, minus the one, to get the win in the Arizona Bowl. All right, last bowl game of the day. The Orange Bowl. And how fitting is this? Tennessee against Clemson. It don't get much more orange than that. Clemson is a six-point favorite currently. The total sits at 63.5 over at BetUS. It's Friday, December 30th, 7 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And I look at these numbers. And my numbers have Tennessee by 6.64. Now, that's that's the data from week eight of the season on. Here's the issue with this model. It doesn't account for opt-outs. It doesn't account for injuries. It doesn't account for quarterback changes. Uh, there's issues, obviously. This Tennessee defense, even with the South Carolina game thrown in there, uh, has still been number 45 PPA per drive. And I think a lot of that was helped by, you know, putting getting a zero on the scoreboard against Vanderbilt. I think that certainly helped. But that Clemson offense at number 89 PPA per drive, that's not what it's going to be with Cade Klubnick. Like, Cade Klubnick is going to be able to score on this Tennessee defense, just period. Uh, let's look at what the Tennessee defensive numbers look like. Number 99 PPA per pass. Number 86 in passing success rate allowed. They're uh, number 93 in passing downs PPA. Now, again, while the Clemson numbers look bad, Klubnik showed when you put him in the ball game, he's going to be really good. I don't think DJ Uyongalele is going to play in this game, so Klubnik is going to be the dude. And, yeah, while Tennessee can stop the run, they're obviously not very good at stopping the pass. And so you start looking at other intangibles, etc., Turnover margin certainly leans towards Tennessee, but that's without Joe Milton being in for the majority of the season. Now, he may be super improved, but eh, I don't think he's as good at holding on to the ball uh, as Hendon Hooker was. 
Penalties per game, Tennessee is number 117. Clemson, number 43. Points per play margin, Tennessee has been number five. Uh, Clemson, number 13. And this is a tricky one because the model can't really account for all of these different changes that are going on. I don't think you're going to have a ton of opt-outs in this one, honestly. Like, there's some on Clemson's side, but I think that they've got enough depth behind them to be able to make up for that. You're still going to have a lot of guys play for Clemson that are really, really, really good. I think I'm going to have to go completely against the model here, and I'm going to have to roll with Clemson based on uh, just talent alone. And uh, once you figure out that scheme, I think I think you're okay. So I, I like Clemson quite a bit here. Uh, so Clemson minus six is going to be my play on that one because he, again you can't you can't really change anything on it like you can't you can't change the individual players that are going to be out and we don't even know who all is going to be out right now I know Jalen Hyatt's not playing that's one of the biggest deep threats I know Tillman's not playing uh, yeah that's going to be an issue so who is Tennessee going to throw to right, give me Clemson give me Clemson on that. All right, that's going to wrap things up on this one. We went through 12 ball games. I hope I hit all of them. Yes, it appears that I did. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Christmas. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that you're enjoying your holiday and that you're doing what you need to do uh, to make yourself a better person heading into the new year. So we will have bowl preview number four coming up, uh, whether it's a day or two days after this, whatever it may be. But I hope that you all are enjoying life and enjoying spending time with your loved ones. Don't take them for granted. Check out BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. Fast payouts, personalized customer service. They're awesome. Best bonuses in the biz. You can sign up for a $50 free play. No deposit required by clicking the link in the description. As always, make sure that you check out uh, the BetUS College Football Show. There's a link in the description for that as well. Subscribe over there. We're almost to 12,000, so certainly, certainly help us out with that. But other than that... It's time to get out of here. Valter Marie Surf Company, check them out. There's a link in the description there. And Flow Sports, another link down there as well. Also, by the way, while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the Winning Cures Everything podcast? And, of course, the YouTube show, if you've not done so already. That would certainly help. All right. With that said, it's time to roll. Let's do this. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.